What is cracking YouTube? JT, I am the Ty here, bringing you guys yet again another episode of the Final Fantasy VII Let's Play. And in today's episode, we are leaving the Gelnica, um, good riddance to that place, right? And <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and move along with the storyline. Well, kind of moving along with the storyline. You can get the key, and uh, we can also uh, figure out some more backstory on Vincent. Now, someone asked me if I was gonna show that scene. Of course I'm gonna show that scene. I love fleshing out all the different characters. And I think it's even more important, considering I really haven't used Vincent nearly as much as I probably could have. So we're gonna keep on heading in this direction. The interesting thing is, it looks like this area is underneath the, uh, the northern continent, so let's keep on going in this direction. I believe that there's like a cave or something. Obviously, just make sure you don't run into, uh, into that dastardly evil emerald weapon floating around. I mean, if she starts to pursue you, just like float up out of the water, dive back down. I just suggest being very, very careful. Now there's like a little turn right here, which is a little bit tricky. I don't know if any of you guys would notice something like that, but there's a key. And do you think this is analysis complete? Exact date of origin cannot be determined. Estimated to be several thousand years old. It's the key of the ancients. Receive the key item. Key of the ancients. But now that we got that, that was, that's pretty much everything that you needed to do down here. Um, once I take the thing to Bugenhagen, um, it's going to trigger um, a big series of events. It's going to take... It's going to really drive the storyline, so um, I don't want to do that just yet. However, um, there is something that I want to do. I wanted to uh, I wanted to show you guys um, Vincent's backstory, so we're going to go find Lucretia's cave. I feel like that's uh, even more cool. As you can see, there's like a little cave right here, which you didn't notice before. So, let's go ahead and travel on this area. And for those of you who are wondering who the heck Lucretia is, you will figure out in just a second. So, let's keep on traveling right here. Anyways, I hope you guys are doing absolutely fantastic. I thought there was a moment where you could turn right there. I kind of feel like I'm flying the Millennium Falcon, even though I'm underwater and I'm in a submarine. This is what it feels like. That's why I... It's so funny. Like, I don't consider myself, like, a Trekkie person, but I saw, like, the new Star Trek, and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, but I'm, like, I've always been, like, a big Star Wars fan. So I just really like the idea of like flying around in an airship. I like dog fights, really. That's what it boils down to. Like even World War II stuff is really interesting to me. So here we go. You can go ahead and park right here. Okay. Well, I'm trying to park right there. If I run into Emerald Weapon, I'd be mad. I'd be mad. You'd be mad. We all be mad. Maybe you you tap the circle button when you're on the surface. Yeah, I'm gonna try that instead. There we go. No, it's the square. It's the X button. Now, in order to learn more about the storyline for Vincent today, we're going to go ahead and uh, put Vincent into our party. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, <laughs> Vincent and Yuffie in our party for the win. We did get that cool weapon for Vincent, by the way, in that one ship. So we got the Winchester right here. We got the Outsider. Um, that sounds great. So let's put the Outsider on him. Because, you know, Vincent does look like an Outsider, right? So, go right here. And there's a little secret area behind the cave that nobody might know about. We Sephiroth. That voice. It can't be. Lucretia? Vincent. Lucretia, stay back! It just mirrors as Vincent looks super emo right there with his haircut. And uh, that looks like a young Hojo, right? If she is happy, then I don't mind. I'm against it. Why experiment on humans? She and I are both scientists. After that, a child was born to Lucretia. The child's name... The child's name was Sephiroth. And I know you guys are thinking, what? I thought that Sephiroth was 
born to, from Genova, right? Lucretia. It's amazing how you don't have to say a single word to get the complete emotion behind everything here, so... body is the punishment that's been given to me. I was unable to stop Professor Gast and Hojo and Lucretia. I was unable to stop them. All that I was able to do was watch. That is my punishment. Lucretia, you're alive. I wanted to disappear. I couldn't be with anyone. I wanted to die. But the Genova inside me wouldn't let me die. Lately, I dream a lot of Sephiroth. My dear, dear child. Ever since he was born, I never got to hold him. Even once. Not even once. You can't call me his mother. That is my sin. Back. Stay back. Vincent, won't you please tell me? What? If Sephiroth is still alive? I heard that he died five years ago, but I see him in my dreams so often, and I know that physically, like myself, he cannot die so easily. Please, Vincent, tell me. Stay back. Lucretia, Sephiroth is dead. And I really hope I put the emo the emotional weight behind that one, guys. I, I really thought that I didn't do the proper job with Zack, but I really hope that I did something right there. Um, for those of you who want me to elaborate on the storyline just a little bit, I'm going to do it. Basically, um, basically, the way I like to think about it is that Vincent... Well, I mean, it's pretty obvious. Vincent loves Lucretia. Like, like he loved her his entire life. Um, obviously, he didn't agree with whatever she was planning to do in the name of science, and um, she went to Hojo. And Hojo experimented on her and impregnant, impregnated her and injected Genova cells into her baby. So that is Sephiroth right there. So, I mean, like, so Sephiroth, his mother is Genova in a sense, but in reality, his mother is Lucretia, like the mom that he never knew about. And his dad's a Hojo, which is really, really creepy. And then when he tried to confront Hojo, Hojo shot him and then experimented on him, which is the reason why... Vincent changes forms in his limit breaks. Like, you have the Galleon Beast right here. I haven't even revealed all the other ones that he has. He has, like, Hellmaster, Chaos, all these different forms, which are all really, really cool, which means I should probably use Vincent a lot more. But, um, if you guys identify with that story at all, I, I don't know if I should make this, like, a much shorter video than all the other ones, just to, uh, just to dedicate it to Vincent or something like that. Um, but if you identify with, you know, like, having lost somebody that you love, but just knowing that they're happy is enough for you. I, I don't I, I don't know. I feel like that, that resonates with me too. I love this game so much. If, if you identify, you know, feel free to leave it in the comments below because I'd be more than happy to hear about it. I, I know this, like, I'm being super personal and then, like, putting yourself out there on the internet in comment form, but I'm not here to judge you and I don't think anybody else is here to judge you. And if they are, they're... They don't know. I'm, I mean, like, because that's, that's what being human is all about, really, right? So, um, be sure to leave something in the comments below if you felt that way, because I, I sure as hell resonate with, how, with uh, how Vincent felt right there. And I thought that was so powerful when he was like, Sephiroth is dead. That he, can't, he can't break it to her that Sephiroth is trying to destroy the world, you know? So, 
the, like, the baby that she really wanted. I don't know. So, um, I don't know if I'm going to cut the video right there. There's one little side quest I realized that I could do right now. So I think I'm going to cut straight to that, show you guys, and then I'll end the video. So I'll be right back. Surprise, surprise, guys. Welcome back. I just realized uh, there's another thing that I can show you besides the one that I was planning on showing you. So, I'll, like, remember how we got the Leviathan scale when we went to that underwater um, mat uh, materia reactor down in Junin? Um, the Leviathan scales are good because, if you remember, there are caves over in the Wutai area that had those giant flames in it that could not be put out. Well, guess what? Leviathan put some out. So, let's go ahead and uh, get the items in that area, right? So, I'm going to go ahead and head into these different caves. I believe that area just takes you to another statue, so that's not a particularly good area. I'm going to cut this battle out because I want to condense this video down and put more emphasis on the, uh, on the story with Vincent. I'll be right back. Here we go, guys. Here's a cave right here. I think there might be only one cave, so... Yo, you got the Leviathan scale right here. The scale of the sea god shines. And you can see that it, that it goes down, but there's actually a treasure chest if you keep on going in that direction. So if you keep on pushing the flames um, back to to whence it came, I feel like I'm fighting the uh, the Balrog with, uh, with Gandalf or something, right? So we get the Oritsu. I don't even know how to pronounce Oritsu. I don't know, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not quite familiar with that, but there you go, there's a long-range weapon for Yuffie that's very, very good. You can see that that's her best weapon right there. Not too much of a difference, except for this one has normal materia growth and has two unlinked slots, which is totally fine, because I don't think she had the two, the last two things were linked at all anyway. So we got a stronger weapon for Yuffie now, which is really cool. And now if you go back over here, there's another treasure chest that we can do, and I believe this has a steel as well materia. I believe that's what it is. Yeah, so here we go. This reveals you the steel as well material, and those are the two items that you can get in the Dachau um, statue over in Wutai once you have the Leviathan scale. So I hope you guys uh, found that useful. Um, I'm going to head back out and show you guys another little side quest, and then we're going to move along um, move along with the videos. Uh, stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back, and before I start one more little thing that I think you might be able to do before the end of disc number two. Now, we are wrapping up disc number two, by the way. Go ahead and talk to this guy. Uh, that's funny. Did I drop the key to this gate somewhere? Was it when I was on the excavation tour? Obviously, there's a gate key to get back through here. That's the key to Sector 5, by the way, so... Um, let's go ahead and find it. Alright, guys, I am standing outside of Bone Village, and this is the only excavation site in the game that I know of, so this must be where he dropped the key. Now, in order to get the key, um, you want to say that you're looking for normal treasure, so go ahead and click normal treasure. I'm not quite sure why the key to Sector 5 would be considered normal, unless they don't know that it's a key to freaking Midgar, right? Which is really cool. I didn't know that Midgar would let you out of the city. I guess it would make sense, but, you know, they seem like such a totalitarian um, regime that you, you think that they would make it really, really hard for the citizens to leave that area, but maybe not. I don't know. Not to say that there's, like, anything outside of Midgar, really. Really not a whole lot of cities. There's, just, like... I feel like it's just, like, very sporadic settlements, which is very unusual. You're just, like, one densely populated area in the whole world that has, like, all the life sucked out of it. <laughs> then you have, like, all these other places just, like, kind of scattered about, strewn about, so... Here we go. Let's go ahead and put down these other people, and hopefully this will help us find the key. And if not, then I will just cut to when I actually find the key. And like I mentioned before, like with the Lunar Harp, you know, you just you detonate the bomb. Uh, they're all going to look in the direction where the treasure is. Hopefully they're going to be looking for um, the key to Sector 5. And apparently they're all down here, which is so, so bad, because I did not put enough people down at the bottom. I thought it was going to be at the top. So that one girl in the purple area is looking straight down here. So I'm going to keep on moving in her line of sight like this. And this kid's moving, looking right down here. So what do you guys think? Uh, you think this is the right area? I'm going to dig right here. I'm going to dig right here. Hopefully I find something. If I don't find anything, that's going to make me very, very sad. But if I find the key to Sector 5, then that'd be very, very cool, right? So... If I find the key, I would be very pleased. Nothing in here. Dope! Okay, I'm going to keep on looking. I'll be right back. Hey guys, I found it! Here we go, we got the Receive the Key item, Key to Sector 5, it only took me about 15 tries, it was very, very painful. I was almost under the impression that I couldn't get it this early in the game, even though I don't feel like it's very early in the game, it's very late actually. We're approaching the end of disc number 2, 
by the way, so hopefully, uh, for those of you who are tuning in, and in the back of your mind, you're probably thinking, when is this game going to end? I've been watching this LP for quite a while. Um, it's gonna end pretty soon, so don't, <laughs> don't worry too much about that. Although, shouldn't be happy about that. What do you get? What's gonna happen? No more Final Fantasy. Oh, man. So, um... The reason why I wanted to do this is because there's one little thing I wanted to show you guys. I don't think a lot of people know about it. I thought it was very, very interesting, though. If you go into Eris' church right here... You can see her. There's like a ghost of her, right? And I don't know if a lot of people know about that, but when you approach it, she disappears. They're pretty. Hey, where's the flower lady? She was right here, little kid. She was right here. So I just wanted to share that with you, because I always thought that was so cool. I stumbled across that when I was younger, and I, I was like, wow. I, I love this game. I love this so much. So <laughs> I just wanted to show you guys that. Now, there's one other thing that you want to do. Um, you actually want to have uh, Tifa in your party for this. So I'm going to go up to a save point and put her into my group. Um, obviously, these people are going to die because we beat them when we were at, like, what, level 5 or level 10 or something. No, they're no match for our group now that we're, like, level 50-something. Like, we've got so many levels on them. And they don't even give us any experience. But uh, we're going to head over to the wall market really quickly. And I might just cut over there because you guys have actually seen this area already. But I need to put uh, Tifa in my party in order for this little trick to work. So, put Tifa into my group. And uh, I'm going to cut all the way back over there. And I'll be right back, guys. Hey guys, here we go. I'm approaching the wall market, and as you can see, Sector 7's still there. I read the, the most sad comment one time. Someone went back in here, got you know, the key to Sector 5, and they're like, Oh cool, I can go visit um, Jesse and, and Biggs and Wedge, right? And then they kind of pause for a second, and they're like, Oh wait. Hmm. Here, I received the premium heart, and this only happens when you have Tifa in your party, which is very weird, because if you play around with this machine normally, it tries to shoot you, right? So... Totally busted, but the premium heart is very, very cool because I believe it powers up. Um, I believe it powers up um, the higher her, her limit break is, her limit gauge is. So the strong, so like the higher, the closer she is to her limit break, the stronger her attacks are, which is actually pretty cool. And there's one other item, item that you can actually get here. Go to machine and gun. Um, this guy's actually selling a one of a kind weapon now. Um, I got something good for you. Why don't you buy it? You probably just found it lying somewhere, right? I'll admit that I found it, but you may never be able to get one like it again. How about 129,000 gil for it? What kind of price is that? No, I don't want it right now. Um, it's a sneak glove, and it makes stealing easier, so it's actually a pretty good weapon. Unfortunately, the reason why I can't buy it is because I don't even have 129,000 gil, so that's ridiculous. But um, that's all that I wanted to show you guys today. Um, tons of little side quest stuff, but I really hope you guys enjoyed that video, or you found it useful, or you really enjoyed that backstory with Vincent, or the fact that... Um, we saw Eris again. So, uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna leave you guys at that. Um, feel free to click the like button if you did. Obviously, let me know down in the comments below. Um, feel free to sub to my channel if you have not already. I'm always happy to see, um, new viewers and new comments. And, um, I'll catch up with you guys soon. Uh, bye.